Hi everyone! Now I am trying this time to see if you can still hear the music. If that music is too loud over my voice, let me know so I can slide it down because I'm listening to it too, but I get a different volume setting so I can still hear it. You know what I mean. Anyways, happy Saturday evening. I, there was absolutely no way I was going to be able to wait until next Friday to keep working on this well. For those of you who were with me yesterday, you saw that I got the well pulled together to the point where I have the well itself as well as its cross beam going on and everything like that. So what I'm hoping to do tonight is to get the bucket and chain with the pulley set up as well as with the, I'm going to put a roof over this. Um, so I'm going to put a little roof over here and I'm going to show you as well how I make shingles for roofs, especially the shingles I'm going to be using for this Zobeck build for Cobalt Press. So it's going to be a very easygoing mellow night. There's a few in the chat. So hello to you, Paolo, Puddin, and DM Insomnia. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see if anyone else comes along. It's one of those things I was like, eh, you know what? I'll do it for the sake of having a recording. So if I have time to turn this into a more condensed tutorial, I have those steps in process. Uh, so we'll see what happens. So anyways, it's basically gonna be nice and low key. Let me just shift shifting around here. I gotta fix a window. There we go. Um, so it's gonna be nice and low key. And um, hello, Malian. It's 5.30 in Washington. Oh, that's right. That's right. There's people who are in the past who are like, you know, we're in the future right now. I'm in the future right now, the Eastern Daylight Savings Time. <laughs> well, thank you, mailman, for jumping in and uh, hopefully you have a nice evening ahead of you. So I'm all set. I have gotten my nice little, I found these great new mugs at Walmart. Look at this. How cool is this? It's got the, I mean, it's color shift. So for me, I'm like color shift means it's mine. So I have my, my nice little summer ale in here. So I'm going to enjoy my, my beer. I'm gonna keep going with this well, and we're gonna see how far I can get with this because I really do wanna make progress on this. I can't believe we're moving into October in a couple days. That to me is just, that's insanity. Um, which means I have like, oh, about 10 weeks left for uh, trying to get everything pulled together for this build. So that being said, what I wanna do is I need to first look through, I know, isn't it nice? Hello, is it Kier? or here. Let me know if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, please. I know it's nice and shiny and quite frankly, mailman, that's what caught my attention first. Ooh. <laughs> and here's the cool thing. They have like, I am so tempted to put this on my Amazon wish list. They have like utensils in this stainless steel rainbow effect stuff. And I'm like, I really kind of want to get the utensils too, because it's so flipping cool looking, but it's a frivolous request. It really is. And it's not something like I need it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to empty out all my lovely gears that I have. Um, these are the smaller ones. It's actually the packets I got came in all different sizes, uh, which yes, I did go through and I did. <laughs> I sorted them out by size. It's just what I do. And don't forget, I had these in this uh, container so that I could texturize the um, hand cut bricks. So let's just put them all back together. And I'm looking for two gears maybe a Richard gear. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Although, you know, Richard gear, pretty woman era that I wouldn't be complaining. Um, so I'm looking for two gears that look similar enough to each other. I was tempted to use this fellow because he has that, Ooh, get back here. He has that little spacing in there. And I was debating it because I'm like, mm, maybe, maybe that could work, uh, for where I'm going to run the chain but then I'm realizing that's gonna be a pain in the butt. So not so much. Hello, Travis, how are you? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take just um, some foam core in between the two and put that so that it's between the two of them and that way we can get the uh, chain to go over that. That's the tentative game plan. We'll see. At this point, I'm kind of experimenting, uh, especially for this pulley system. I do wanna make one adjustment on this camera. I swear sometimes when my computer goes into sort of like a pseudo sleep mode, the focus shifts just ever so slightly on me. So I just want to tweak the focus just a wee bit. Almost there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's about as good as it's going to get. So we'll do that. And then, so yeah, right now I want to try and find a couple gears that have a similar look so that when they go back to back, I think I might do these guys actually. This is looking, these are looking promising. All right, so I think maybe, maybe I might do those two together. All right, I'm gonna put those to the side, but you can see they all have um, just some different details. Like this is another cool looking one. So 
I'm thinking about that maybe going that way. That's more of like a star as opposed to a cross on the gear. You can see there. Do I have another one in that style? I think I might. Oh, I do. All right. So that's another option. Hello, Peter. <clears throat> How are you tonight? So I've got those. Uh, let's see, is there anything else here that looks kind of cool? This just looks way too cool and ornate. I don't, well, I don't know. Maybe for a city. Maybe for a city wall that could be cool looking. Uh, she says that she looks for another one. Well, I have another one in a different color. I mean, I'm going to paint them. So maybe. Oh, this could be a problem. No, these are actually too big. That solves that problem. These are too big. That's eating up the well. And uh, there's also this style here, which if I got two of those, that might also do quite nicely. All right, that gives me three. I should stop. I'm gonna stop with those. We'll, look, we'll take a closer look at those. Still gonna fiddle with this camera a little bit. I wonder why it's so okay. Uh, yes, there's going to be a suspended bucket over the pulley system, uh, mailman. That's the plan. And there's gonna be a chain, and the chain's going to um, wrap around one of the posts. That's where my that's where my stylistic mind has gone with it. And I do have this lovely little cap that I'm going to use for a bucket. It's going to transform into a bucket. That actually just worked out by pure dumb luck. I was looking at it like, hey, this could definitely, this could be a thing. So let me just get these all put away. And how's the music to voice ratio? Please let me know if that's overwhelming or so on and so forth. Oh, it's good to hear you're doing well, Peter. Very nice. So this is the, yeah, I'm gonna fix this one more time. I'm not happy with this. You can also like prep and set as much as you want to and there's still always giving, going to be some fun little issues. Let me try a contrast bump. I'm wondering if that is part of our issue here. Yeah, get that up a little bit. Drop that down. I'm liking that better. I'm wondering. Okay, yeah, I'm happier with that now. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being nitpicky. <laughs> Let's see, what do we have going on in here? Uh, missed the part where you said you got this the wheels from. The, uh, the Amazon. <laughs> I got it from the Amazon. I got the gears from Amazon. If you just type in steampunk, steampunk jewelry findings, or miniature gears in Amazon, you will find those bits and pieces. Okay, so let's take a look at what I have here for my gear styles now. So there's this set, which is pretty straightforward for a pair of gears. I have this one, kind of more like, you know, throwing star-esque stars on there. And then I have, this is slightly smaller but it does have this neat texture around the outer portion of the gear, like the cogs are just, or the teeth are just a little bit more um, cut into. Let me see. I'm kind of leaning towards that one. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with these guys. This is, this is where I'm gonna go. These are speaking to me. The other ones, not so much. Not so much do they speak. <laughs> uh, now the bag won't open. So I'm gonna get the pulley system pulled together. No pun intended there. Just gonna take a couple of little extra steps. So the first thing I wanna do is get the spacing established. Let me get out my little utility knife. And I'm basically just gonna cut just a section out. This is gonna be like a tiny little bit here. And then just very carefully shave off the edges so it has more of a rounded-esque look to it. This is not going to be a fully functional setup, mind you. I'm not making this so the bucket actually goes up and down the well. That's just going to get too finicky. In fact, too many moving parts. I worry that something might go kaput um, while they're doing play stuff and I'm not around to help fix it. So I want it to have the look of it, you know, having a pulley system but not necessarily the full-on function. Uh, is the cap from a mechanical Pencil eraser. Oh, that's a good point. The cap is from, um, there's actually this medication you can get if you're coming down with something, um, oxacillococcium. 
I think <laughs> is how it's said. It's O and lots of C's and lots of O's and then L's and I's thrown in there. Um, but this is the cap to the tube that the medication comes in because the medication's like these little um, pill-like forms. So I save these like crazy because they actually do make pretty nice size buckets. I mean, is it perfectly to scale? No, but you get the idea it's a bucket. So this is gonna get a little doctoring. I've actually done this before for the um, cottage that I made. There's a little bucket on there and it's made out of this thing too. So that's what the bucket's gonna be made of. So now I have literally just this small little rounded out. I use my fingers just to sort of soften it up a little bit. And I'm going to attach these two pulleys together. Does this have a wrong side, right side? That's what I'm looking at right now. I don't think it does. Nope, nope it does not, so that helps. All right, I'm gonna put some glue here. Just some hot glue. I'm gonna see if this will take, because I did put my Gorilla Glue in there. If you haven't discovered it yet, the Gorilla Glue sticks uh, for your hot glue gun, they actually work pretty nicely. And that, yep, that took. All right, so that's one. Let's get two. I'm actually going to put the glue on that. And then come in. Yes, Travis, thank you for agreeing with me. It just, it has the right feeling to it for me. Okay, now we have, ha, ah, now we have glue stuck on my nail. That's not what I wanted, but we do have, as you can see here, this lovely space. And what I am gonna do is I'm gonna put paint in here as well. Um, and that way it'll have a metallic look and I'll put a little bit of Mod Podge into that paint just to strengthen the foam more. But this is starting my pulley. Now I do need to go and look at, yeah, that's nice and firm. Okay, I do need to look at my reference photo quickly. Uh, like I said, I found a great reference photo. It's not shareable is the problem. All right, so I have that part in and then, and then, Oh, that's right. I need my wire. Hello. Oh, I am just, it was one of those things, Quinian, where I didn't want to wait. Because this is one of those things where, and I'm sure you all, those of you who craft get it, when you're crafting and the inspiration's going and you're sitting there like, I really want to get this tackled because I like where it's going. I like how it's looking. I didn't want to have to sit and wait until next Friday when I'm starting to get ideas for things. Give me just one second. I need to get a paint color from behind me. I'm gonna go with this one. Um, so I just figured, you know what? It's basically me and the kids this weekend and I'm bored. <laughs> I'm bored. Let me just pop on and see who shows up, says hello. And there's my paper plate for paint. And uh, let's just take it from there. So I'm going to take, that's not the color I wanted. Why did I grab that one? This is the color I wanted. So I'm gonna take this Royal Ruby, cause this has a reddish tone to it and I'm gonna dry brush over again to kind of blend those two metals together. So I'm gonna take this and I am going to add Mod Podge into it to help strengthen that foam center. Get a little bit of this out. Of course I don't need that much, but you know, paint isn't exactly nice about little bitty drops. So you can see right there, that's the Ruby Red and that's the Dazzling Metallics from Deco Art, which is not a brand I have much of line wise. So that would be that. And then let me, where's my paint stick? There it is. I have a special stick for stirring. So yes, my, my weekend is basically, we had soccer games this morning and this is just matte Mod Podge that I've mixed in with it. Um, I don't want this still super shiny, even though it is a metallic. Just trying to get this blended in well. I like how you can see the swirling. Um, so we had two soccer games today. Both did well, both teams won, so everyone was happy. Which means, you know, yay, hooray, the deal was they got to get some uh, ice cream after dinner. Which they were thrilled about. <laughs> it's like, yeah, ice cream's good. Ice cream for the win. Uh, thank you. You found the steampunk wheels even on Amazon Germany. Perfect. That sounds about right. Glad that worked out for you. Uh, yeah, we'll use this brush. 
All right, so I'm just gonna get this onto where that foam just went, just to start getting that paint on there. And that way that guy can dry too. And while he's drying, I'll start showing you the whole thing with the shingles for the roof, because that's another thing I wanted to get tackled for everyone. I am putting this paint onto the gears themselves because the gears were two different metal colors. Hey, chat, nice to see you. Thanks for jumping in. How have you been? How's life been to you lately? I do get a kick out of seeing the familiar names jump in and saying hello. It's always fun. It's a good thing. All right, so that is now all painted up. And I'm actually gonna use my paint stir stick to kind of prop the gear a little bit. There we go. So that way, that way it's not going to get uh, mutilated. I do need some water. Well, it's good to see that you're doing well. I will take doing well. Oh, this is, <laughs> I'm not planning on painting any further tonight, so I will use this older water. Uh, oops, I thought I'd emptied that. Just not. That's the hard part when you have a basement with no basement with no sink in it. I feel like running upstairs. So because of that, I also got like baby wipes for my hands when I get paint on them. <sighs> Too many projects and not enough time. Hi, I'm the choir. <laughs> Are you the preacher? Oh God, tell me about it. I'm I'm sitting here. I'm just like, oh yeah, there's. I've got stuff to do. I absolutely have stuff to do, and not complaining at all. I am thrilled to bits. I'm also trying to reach. There we go. I'm thrilled to bits. I am super duper blessed and lucky that I am keeping busy and I have all these things going on. Don't get me wrong, but sometimes you just kind of stand and be like, Ugh. I'll get there. I will get there. I promise I will get there. All right. So some of you may have seen from the notice, some people calling it the notice board, some people are bug. Some people are calling it the um, message board, depending on where you are and what you've watched, so on and so forth. Um, but this is the collection of shingles that I've made so far. And yes, I do them by hand because I just absolutely prefer in leaps and bounds how these look um, over other methods. So these are the shingles I've created and I wanna make sure they had more of a stylistic appeal to them, again, because we're in a city. Um, <clears throat> it's not like they're in like the, the poor parts of the city or like uh, that type of thing. So, oh, you found out you're running in a real life game tomorrow afternoon, that'll be fun. So I actually wanted these to have more of a heightened look to them. And let me get out the message the uh, message board for you, for those who haven't seen it yet. So I used these already on the roof for my little message, notice board, bounty board, announcement board, whatever you wanna call these things. A lot of people are making them lately, which is fun. Um, so this is the one that I've made for Cobalt Press. <clears throat> Pardon. And it's the shingles. You can see how this little dipping action. It just gives a nice little point of interest. So that's what I wanted to keep going with. Uh, it's kind of going to be my standard city shingle look. Uh, the cathedral roof I'm kind of toying around with. Uh, the taverns, definitely will be getting these. So as I'm babbling, what you're going to need to make these are very thin cardboard or cardstock. Um, so I have this cardboard stuff. And then you also want to get these special pair of scissors. Now I got a full set. There's a bunch of different edgings to the set. I think it was a set of six. Um, I am going with this one. You can see that's the stylized edge. And these are just craft scissors. You can use it for cutting on paper and stuff. And they just, you trim away and you get these fantastic edges. The well, 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 hello, ghost man. Um, so the trick to this I have found is they're not really easy to keep going all the way across like you would with a normal pair of scissors. So there is sort of a limit of snip. Not a technical term, but that's the best way I can describe it. So what you wanna make sure you are doing is that your, your camera is being hit by your ruler, because why not? So what you wanna do is you wanna take your heavy metal ruler. Heavy metal. I'm kidding. Uh, and what I do is about two inches, well not about, but it's gonna be two inches strips, two inch strips. There's, there's the phrasing I want. And yes, you are getting me on I have been up all morning and running around, so I'm a little bit tired. Christine, you are back. Woohoo! Well, I'm glad you made it back. So I'm just gonna run this along. And then taking my utility knife. 
score it a couple times. And now I have my snippable. <laughs> For snippability. Yes, thank you, Travis. <laughs> Metal. And that is going to help me make it a lot easier for trimming this. Um, these can be a little clunky sometimes. Like if you try and go to, I'm just being very transparent about these if you're thinking about getting them. Again, another Amazon purchase, and this is Fiskars. Uh, <laughs> paper edgers. It's the technical name. Fiskars paper edgers. If you try and go too close to the edge, you will find it's going to fray it a lot. Not fray a, but fray it. So you have to be careful with how far in you go for snipping it. And hello, Dan Dylan. Thank you for joining us as well. That I have a few people from the West Coast now. Oh yeah, by all means, go ahead and share. Share and share alike, make everyone happy. Uh, so you're gonna find it is far easier to get started working further in. And you wanna get it so that these things, once you start the snip, you are dedicated to the snip. All right, you are married to the snip. So get it in as deep as you possibly can and then do a full push down. And that will give you far better results. So that's just something to keep in mind. Two inches I have found for me personally, for the pair of scissors I have, that's really their limit. Um, so play it by ear. So once you have that done, this is, this is junk. This is junk because of the way that one frayed up. So then what I did is basically, you're gonna jump down this is eyeballing it. You wanna jump down about an inch to start your trim again. The other thing you can do, uh, for those of you who wanna make sure you have a, a more standard guidance, you can go in with your mechanical pencil and just lightly mark about every inch or so on your cutting mat. Let me sneak you down a little bit. All right, good. So, having those little right along the way is gonna help you. And then, and then basically it's just a matter of sort of, they don't have it exactly lined up with, sort of lining up where you've made those notch marks already, getting your scissors placed there and trimming through. And then I'll show you what the next part is. And again, don't get too worried about this being exacting or exact. Hi, wandering silence, because you are you are going to be cutting these apart. So there's ways of kind of making it for the fact it's like, oh, it didn't go directly straight, that type of thing. Um, if you want this to be more exact, then obviously take your time. But when you're making shingles, this kind of takes a while. You can get two more snips in here. One, last one. Okay, so now I have, so that each of the longer sides have this lovely stylized edging, which Again, I am a fan of, and the scissors also have, Heartbeat is the name of this particular edge. I don't know if I call that a heartbeat, but okay. So you have that going for you. Now what you wanna do, thank you so much, ghost man, addicted to the muse. Rumor has it I can be very addictive. <laughs> There's someone out there, where does he live? Um, he lives in Italy and he wrote me a note how he watches my channel every night because it helps him relax so he can actually fall asleep. He doesn't craft either. <laughs> I'm like, hey, dude, I get it. I, I guess I'm sort of an ASMR type-esque situation. Maybe. All right, so back, back at it. You could do two things. You could eyeball it, which it's me. I tend to do that. I'm not going to put scissors in my eyes. Don't worry. Or you can place the strip back onto your mat. And you can mark, again, don't get fussy on yourself and make yourself neurotic. Just mark where your half inch would be on either side. And with just a standard pair of scissors, snip through. So that's your two methods. You can kind of just play around with it, eyeball it, which I'm gonna freehand right now. Or you can be more technical and you can get your actual measurements in there. It just depends how much time you really want to devote into doing this. There you go. And this is one of those things, you can also do this while like you're watching TV. Pass the time, do something fun. Host a stream, talk to people in the chat. There are different ways of handling this. Go take a sip of my beer. <clears throat> you're right, wandering silence. <laughs> we almost had a spit take. That would have been funny. Yes, the actual artist. <laughs> 
<laughs> where did I put, oh, there it's over there. I had a slight panic, I'm like, where did my gear go? All right, so I have these now, so you have a straight edge and you have the fancy edge. So what you're gonna do now is you're going to look for the high dips. Actually, where are the scissors? I just put the scissors away. These are to show on the scissors. So you'll see in this pattern, there are higher dips. So right here and right there. So you're gonna be looking for those in your edging. And when you do that onto your actual trimmed out shingles, you are just going to snip where those higher dips are. And it starts giving you your shingles by doing that. Now you will find that some of them aren't perfectly measured out. That's okay. Some of them might have little tags. If that's the case, I just kind of go in and trim it away with my scissors. But now I have four shingles made. Pfft, come on. Bob, well, I mean, it's Bob Ross. Yeah, I could totally understand falling asleep to Bob Ross. Then there's me who's kind of like a hyperactive spaz sometimes. I'm like, okay, I'll make you sleep. Maybe it's my energy that makes them sleepy. Maybe that's it. Or it's probably the tutorials where I'm narrating the whole thing. I bet you that is it. I like this mug because it's keeping my beer cold too. So happy camper. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna trim a little bit here because I got a little jagged. And then just go through and trim these down. So this is something, like I said, you could be watching TV and doing this and make a nice little dent. Now you might have it where there's a little bit extra on the edge. Again, that's okay. Let's just go in and trim the excess off and you get your shingles. That actually sounds really bad. And then you get your shingles, you know, like the disease, you get your shingles. The spastic muse. You haven't seen me in action, have you? <laughs> oh God. I have a bizarre sense of humor. Sometimes it translates into antics. You never know. All right, this one, kind of same thing. I got a little choppy on the edge. So this gives you the idea. I'm not gonna do this too terribly long because I actually have a stash already created. And this is something I can do off camera now that I've shown you how I do it on camera. Set the building on fire. He was told there was going to be kick. All right, so that gives us... <laughs> when I snip the dip, we... Yep, there we go. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, don't get me started. Don't, don't. Bad idea, don't get me going. So I have a little tub right now already of all these shingles going, which is thumbs up, yay. So what I wanna do is start working on that roof a little bit. So you can see how the roof gets made too. I'll just pick you girls up and put you over here. And then I have, when was the last time I saw Matt Mercer? Uh, at the live show. Yeah, the live show. That's the last time I saw him. Why? <laughs> God, talk about something that was supposed to go on the radar and then that definitely did not happen. Thank you, Sam Regal, and your lovely costume. God, that costume. Don't get me wrong, it was hilarious. I actually, I grabbed these um, popsicle sticks. I was gonna call them tongue sticks because I'm combining tongue depressor and popsicle sticks. I grabbed these popsicle sticks. These are the inch wide ones. I want to see if these are going to give me, is that what I want for the base of my roof? I don't know. You know, it's funny now that I'm seeing a roof on here, I'm now I'm second guessing if I want to do the roof itself. What I'm going to do is I'll show you how the shingles get done. I don't think I want to do a roof on this now that I've got this going on. I don't want to do a roof on this. Changing my mind, but I will show you how the shingles get done, to be fair, because I do want to show this technique and how it gets pulled together. So we're just going to take, um, yeah, we'll just take some extra of this cardboard and I can show you. And then what I'll do is I'll get into doing the uh, pulley system. Okay, so ooh, I gotta catch up here. Um, dungeon master as you are yourself, correct? Hello, Jos. You DM and paint fingers and make terrain. That sounds like a lot of people I know. All right, so we're just gonna take a... I'm torn, do I wanna do the roof? I don't wanna do the roof, nope. So I'm just gonna take a little strip here and I'll show you how this gets done for the sake of 
transparency. And this is not good. It looks like I lost the top of my tacky paint. You're allowed to change the, oh, trust me, that's the whole thing of this. That's the one thing I want people to see with the live streams is that I, I tend to work very much off the cuff. Some people absolutely sit there and fully plan things out. I, what I do is I go into looking at reference photos and I get concepts built up in my head and consider the different approaches I want to take. And then as I'm putting it together, I'll get it going. If it's something I'm really not sure about, then I'll do a prototype, like how I did the base of the well a few times over to get the prototype idea going. Um, what I'm moving on to now is Take Glue. Take. This cap keeps running away on me. I don't know where that went. I'll find it. That's weird. So I'm taking my tacky glue and I am actually going to take an old gnarly paintbrush and just on, in this case, I'm using just the cheap cardstock. But if you were doing this, say on your cardboard base or your foam base, you're just gonna put a nice thin layer of this tacky glue on. Uh, you could opt to do glue sticks too, like craft glue sticks if you wanted but I just like using the tacky glue the best. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start getting my shingles plotted out. Now I have these all in different lengths and whatnot. You can always trim them down shorter if you want to and I'm actually gonna do that here. But essentially you get the glue on and you're just gonna start placing the shingles next to each other to get your first base row going. And you do want to be careful that you don't have to have them match up perfectly. I mean, a little bit of space actually does help with when it comes time to paint and having those slots appear. So I will say that, don't get too hung up on it. Let's see, use Witch Hunter. No, this is not a Witch Hunter from uh, Warhammer, believe it or not. This is, I'll show them again. He is actually from Cripple God Foundry's Kickstarter, um, The Curse of Hollow Hills. So he's not the witch hunter that you are speaking of. He is someone else entirely. So here we have our first row down. You can see there's the separation of the shingles, which you want, because that's gonna come in handy when you go to paint it. So that's your first row done. And you'll see why I recommend trimming these down. Here is the other guy. This is um, Cripple God Foundry's, uh, I think it was a vamp vampire hunter maybe? Um, he's a hunter, yes, but he's not from Warhammer. This is Cripple God. Uh, they cater to the 28 to 30 millimeter size ones. Uh, Kickstarter, I'm not sure if they're available on their website. I can ask the guys later. But that's who he is. That's who he be. So that's my first layer on. Then what I'm going to do is go back to the tacky glue. And I'm going to paint on another layer of this glue. And I am going to have it bleed over onto the first layer of shingles. Now keep in mind, because I am using this cheap cardstock, you're gonna see it start to curl. When you use thicker material, it won't do that to you. <laughs> but I wanted to show you this, because I've been saying I wanna show you the shingles, and now that I've changed my mind about a roof on the well, I didn't want to uh, chintz out on that on you guys. And then you're just gonna take, and this is where those little points and the shingles help. You're going to basically line up the point to that shingle to the spacing between two of the shingles from the previous row and then start laying them out. So you may have to skip a little bit as you go in. That is totally okay. But you're gonna use that little space in between as your guide point for your next layer of shingles. So you're basically shifting things over is how this is working with these shingles. But you always wanna make sure that the next shingle that goes on sits on that little line there. So you get this staggered effect, like so. And I'll just finish out the row so you can see because I want to show you what you do with the edges too. And sometimes you'll find that you need to apply some more of that tacky glue, which is fine. Or you don't even have to do the whole swath. You can do a little bit at a time as you go along. Okay, so what you'll find sometimes, I got new music. I'm debating if I like this song. It would make a good Inquisitor for the, honestly, Cripple God Foundry has some Sharp, gorgeous, beautiful. Law. Hello, Dustins and Dragons. How are you? Oh, thank you. 
Am I a crafting genius? I think I'm just uh, well versed in crafting, how's that? So as you can see here with this staggered layer, I have two sides here that are not gonna take a full shingle. You have two options, I'll show you the two options. First option, which I kind of prefer to do, it is a slightly more foolproof, is just grab a shingle that you're gonna need. And yes, it's gonna be a full one. Just butt it up against the last shingle you put on and there will be overhang. This helps if you have a free floating roof or one where you can actually get back to trim it. All right. Um, the other thing you can do is go to where you want to put your shingle in and put it where there isn't glue and then just mark where you need that little cut to be and trim down. All right. And then you can, same thing, I need more glue. And then you can put that piece down. So that way, this is the way you'd want to take things if you can't trim the roof later. This is an easier way to do it. So all you have to do now is flip the piece over, take a nice pair of sharp scissors and trim it away. So you will get the same look in the end. It just depends on which approach you want to take. Uh, oh, let me see here. Sorry to ask a odd question. English is not your mother language. Um, it gives, that's a good question, JS. It gives you far better detail this way. Um, if you leave them side by side and kind of score it, I found it just doesn't give you that. I'm the one who likes those little hand, extra hand details to them, which is why these are all individual bricks. This isn't just, you know, draw them in type bricks. It is, I cut the bricks, I textured the bricks, I stack the bricks type of thing. Those little extra touch touches will take the look that much further. And because of the type of commission this is, I want to make sure it gets those extra little details. That's why each single shingle <laughs> is snipped. Uh, so basically, if you want to keep going with this, you'd alternate your lines again, shifting side to side, using your divisions between the shingles. And that's how I make my roof shingles. And now that I'm not making a roof for my well, well, now you know. So that's how these work out. So that's shingles for you. Not the kind that make you sick and you have to see the doctor and take medications and da 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 da. And you have to be a certain age to get the vaccine, I found out. Like they have a vaccine for it, but you have to be like 50 or something. <laughs> All right, so let me put these away. If I can find, there's the lid. I'm gonna go back to doing the um, pulley system. Okay, so that, and then I need, I did get chain, jewelry chain. Simple, Dan, simple thimble. Each single shingle. Each single single. Ink tingy, nope, nope, it's not happening. See, why you guys always do this to me. You give me tongue twisters. I fall right into them. So I picked up a uh, jewelry chain. Brand spanking new. No problem at all. Happy to answer the questions for you. So this is, um, what are you? Oh, claws. I can use those for my own jewelry. So this is very dark. This is black chain. Oh my God, it's like eating the light. Light ear chain. I want a single shingle jingle as background music. Your girl said it. A single shingle jingle. Why I can say that, I don't know. Oh my God, they really have this like secured. Give me. So I purposely got the black so it would look a little less like a piece of jewelry. And then I can just go back over and dry brush metals onto it, which will make it a heck of a lot easier to deal with. But I got this jewelry chain again from it. What I really should just do is take all the stuff I ordered for my Zobek build and I should just put that onto like a, God, if I remember to do this, I'll see if I can get a little um, tab going on my website, uh, sort of its own little like independent Amazon shop. So you can see all these things. So here we go with this chain that I'm definitely gonna use for the vel. Uh, this is gonna be the, the chain to hold the bucket and to hold the pulley as well is the plan. That is going to get a little bit tedious, the whole well thing. <laughs> if we catch the shingles, can we ask the, ask the doctor for the meds that come with a plastic cup to use for a miniature bucket? Uh, no, you just need to get the common cold or the flu for that other medication stuff. That's all. Hello, Zach, meow. <laughs> That's just what I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. 
All right, so there's my not gonna happen roof, which is fine. I'm sure I'll find use for that in a little bit. Now back to this pulley. Has this dried yet? Yes, this has dried. So the plan is basically take the chain, drape it over where I made that spacing with the foam, and the bucket will hang from this portion of the chain. I have to get the bucket made first. I am glad I just realized that. So we're gonna do the bucket first. Um, and then the rest will go through the pulley, which will hang on the cross beam and then it's gonna wrap around like the reference photo I'm using, but I can't share because it's not available. Okay, so back to the bucket. I do want my bucket again, and this is just some clear plastic, which means I am gonna to need to be painting it, but I also need to give it a handle. Not handle like hallelujah, but handle as in you carry. And for that, I'm just gonna use some upside down florist wire. Floral wire. This is, this, I got, I have so much of this. It comes in different colors. I just grabbed standard green because creature of habit. So I'm gonna take this and I will need my wire cutters. Come here, you. You don't have to go too crazy with the length. So just trim off, what's this? Probably like an inch. Yeah, close to an inch. Yeah. Inch and then some. And I'm going to test fit this length into the bucket. What will become the bucket, I should say. But I'm not going to glue it in right away because what I'm going to do is run it through the chain first. Okay, that's far too shallow. Let me get that a little bit more ooched. That's a technical term. It's ooched. Ooch it a little bit. Do I like that? get it to stay in place so I'm kind of just putting this in I do okay so I have that height wise the handle I like the way it looks coming out of the bucket so I'm gonna trim away let me get my hand in this so you can see I'm basically gonna trim away the excess of this tail here so I'll have a nice horseshoe shape of this uh, wire <laughs> like what's this called again oh yeah wire what's that word again oh feet name that movie oh god forewarning i might start singing that song so now i have a bucket with its ando but before i attach the handle into the bucket i am going to go to my chain end this really is cool i don't have any black i might make myself a quick black chain later tonight It'd be really cool for a couple pendants that I have. Total non sequitur. Yes, I do make jewelry too, so. But not on this. <sighs> All right, so I'm going to take my last link. That could be a game. And thread my handle through that last link. <laughs> and have it fly away on me. Where'd that just go? There it is. So carefully thread it. It is an intricate well for reasons. Also because that's just my style. So you're going to basically want to thread it so that the handle goes through that last link in the chain. Like a so, which is hard to show off. Oh, tell me you flipped out again. Uh-oh. Did I lose it? Lose my mind. Oh, I tell you people, be careful doing this because apparently it doesn't want to stay in there. All right, that's a quick fix. I'll just do another one. The time it takes me to find it, I'm just gonna make another one. And this time I know not to cut off as much. Ooch. Yeah, ooch is a technical term. Quite a tech, ooch. You gotta ooch it. Ooch it just a little. Just a little ooch. Ooch, ooch, ooch. Tweak, ooch, rig, all those wonderful things. Yeah, I had to go back to the drawing board because I don't know where that handle just went. Eh. The reality of crafting. <laughs> when you take out all of those cutscenes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
No, I didn't find it. I just made another one. It takes a lot less time to make the other one. Okay, so let's be smart. I am going to take low temp, my good friend low temp, and I'm going to fill low temp with... I'm going to put low temp into the bucket top and fill that with some hot glue. And this is where I need to work quickly. So get that into the bucket. Get this onto the last little bit of the link, which I'm not going to show you again because that's really where things went wrong. Shove this into the bucket while the glue is still warm and let it cool. <laughs> Yeet the handle. <laughs> And now, I just need to let this cool a little bit. How did that happen? Oh, when the strands got caught on it, I see. And now I have, there's a hole in my bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza. Now I have my bucket on the chain. I want it on the chain. I'm just looking to see if I want to add a little bit more in here. Yeah, probably not. I am going to take my nozzle and just sort of smooth out the little bit of glue that did get onto the top portion here. And the bottom of this, there is an opening. I don't know if you can see that, but that's hollow. So I am going to put some hot glue in here just to fill in the base a little bit. And basically take the edge of my nozzle to smooth that as flat as you can feasibly make it. And now let that cool. And the problem is I now have to hold this because I can't put this down. <laughs> you haven't heard that? God, I don't know where that song stemmed, like how I got singing that one. Whatever. Mm -hmm. mm. For the new arrivals, my new mug for my beer and my drinks. I got two of them. Because you know, in case one has to go in the dishwasher. They are dishwasher safe, hooray. Good for cold drinks. I'm sure if I put my tea in there, I'd probably be burning my hand left and right. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the hot glue to cool. But yeah, here we go. Look at that. Now I have... See? We're getting there, kids. <laughs> that made me too happy. <laughs> it's wiggling. All right, chat, you're being nice and quiet. Now I can put you down. Now I need to go back to you and I need to hang this up and over. Also with chain. Uh, Rainbow Moscow Mule Cup, pretty much. Moscow, Moscow Mules have rum in them, correct? Don't let me have them if they do. Uh, it's a summer ale, it's a shock top summer ale, I believe is what it's called. Okay, so I am going to at this point now Gonna hang this here for a second just so I get an idea of length that I want and I do want this to wrap around a couple times so estimate all right so I'm gonna trim my chain again you just need a good pair of wire cutters so now I have a length of chain if we want to get technical yes I will measure and that was hmm, six inches cool like that was exactly that's pretty I tend to drive people crazy by doing that stuff. So six inches length of that chain there. I am gonna need a little bit more for up and around and over for the gear. And I'm wondering, can I thread this through the gear? Hold on, I need to remove. There we go. Remove the residual bit of chain that isn't needed. If I can feed this through no, I can't because then it's going to affect how the chain can go up and over. So, what I was going to do is just basically glue to one side and then up and over and around to the other side. I might actually get a pin. Mules are vodka and gingerbread, then I can have those. If it has rum, I cannot have it. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Rum and I have a very interesting friendship. If I want to pull an all-nighter, forget caffeine. Give me the rum. All right, I am putting a very small dollop of hot glue 
on the exterior of this gear. And then I'm going down to the link and I'm just going to very carefully see, did I talk too much? I spoke too much, yep, this cooled already. So that's no. That's a no. That's a we need to work faster, honey. So here's what I'm gonna do. Let me explain and then I'll do. I'm basically gonna take a dollop of hot glue, put it here at the center gear point. Quickly put that one side of the chain on so that they attach. And then I will cut the length I need, flip it over and do the same thing. Make sense? Yes, you said beautiful. All right, so let me just quickly get this. That's your home. That's where you're gonna live now. All right, did it attach? It did. I'm gonna go back in with my nozzle and just melt it a little bit. Yep, that's what I was worried about. Get back on there. It only caught a portion of the chain. What I might even do is just take a jewelry bead and sandwich the two of those together. Put yourself on an accidental all nighter because you had a bad habit of listening to high energy metal bands. <laughs> Well, I mean, at least you figured out what was happening. Okay, so I have the chain now attached to the gear. And I want to get this up and over the post. And just kind of get a good feel for where I need this to be. All right, I'm very happy where that is. Taking a fingernail, I'm kind of pressing where I know I'm gonna to need to cut it. Now I'm moving my others. And basically there's kind of back and forth thing over that chain that I want to trim out, which is right there. Snip. Snip, snip, bye. Now here's where the fun part's gonna be. Now I get to do the same thing I was talking about before, but this time I want it wrapped around the post before I attach it. This is gonna be the fun and challenging part, is getting the angles all. Oh, this is gonna be so much trial and error, people. Tweezers. <gasps> my tweezers gone. I right, need a nose pliers of this. Do I sell all the stuff I make or do I keep it for um it's kind of a mix, honestly. This I'm not keeping. This is for Cobalt Press. This is part of their order. Uh for the Cobalt uh boof uh terrain stuff they need. Come on, little nose pliers. Help me out there. We have friendliness. We might have some friendliness. Um, so this is gonna go off on its merry way to its own home in a few months. I do make a lot and keep a lot of the stuff I have. Um, oh dear. Some of the stuff is commissioned. Uh, I do take in private commission orders, especially with miniatures. Uh, the Strahd mini I'm painting right now for the lunch break live streams, that guy is a commissioned bit. Okay, and look at, ta-da. I have my pulley hanging from there, which is what I want. And now, perfect. Now what I'm going to do is this is gonna be left free floating for a little while because I still need to paint this. If I were to glue this and then go to paint it, it's just gonna be a pain in the butt to work with. Um, but I did wanna get this on here first before getting paint on it because, 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 because reasons. Um, so that is going to be the pulley system. And what basically will end up happening is I will then take yoink, the other chain bit, feed that up and over and through. And then <clears throat> get it so it pulls up. And then what I'll do for display purposes is just take this chain and I'll wrap it a few times around the post as its way of being secured until the next person wants to use it. Oh gosh, I love, I'm a kobold girl, tried and true. I love Creature Codex. I love Tome of Beasts. They're all great. Oh, Margrave. Oh, I'm loving Margrave. So that's gonna be the essential effect of 
the well. Yeah, I don't I, This is gonna get lost if I put a roof on there. Okay, now I am gonna keep the chain and the bucket off because those I'm gonna put the, 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 the I want to paint separately. So what we're gonna do now, or what I'm gonna do now, is I'm going to get the base coat on for the well and get that mixed up for you guys to see. Um, this is gonna be one of those things, I don't want it to be just a standard gray well. I'm gonna go through and I do see some threading happening here. Sometimes if I see a lot of little threads, I'll just take the nozzle of my hot glue gun and just quickly pass around and that'll help. Kind of get those little spare bits. Okay, I like this song, I'm just starting to dance, so yay. So to do that, I do want my Mod Podge and I'm going to mix it with pavement, darling. Actually, don't I have a premix going on? Or not pavement, no, 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 burn umber. I have a premix of this together already. All right, so this is Mod Podge uh, matte and inside I've mixed in its equal parts, Mod Podge and then burnt umber. Uh, and this is I'm gonna this I'm gonna use this I'm gonna use for my well. This is what I'm going to use. We can speak in full sentences. Huzzah! Get this over here into my water, and we're gonna get the well painted up. Oh, that's about an hour of the stream. That's not too bad. Um, well, no, I also have to do the. We'll get there. Yeah, they are annoying. You can also take your hair dryer, which loud. <laughs> if you take your hair dryer, just don't hold it too close because you can warp, warp the foam. Uh, toy with your hair dryer. I can't tell you which setting and everything like that because every hair dryer is different. Um, but if you do your hair dryer on a higher heat, you can get those little threads to kind of melt up and into themselves, uh, which helps. So let me just put some things away here because I've got too much on my art desk right now. I'm getting distracted. Put your things away. I don't need my metal ruler anymore. Showed you how to make shingles. Yay. Put that all back into my little supply box. Put this back too. And then, oh, that's right. I'm gonna get this paint and then I'm gonna show you how I do the base. That's what I was doing. So I don't want to unplug my glue gun yet. I do need that. I want, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. Not really. Watch, someone's gonna send me a hippopotamus. I was like, I was just kidding. All right, I'm taking some scrap cardboard so I can put that on there. And I'm just gonna get this painted up. Quite straightforward. I already got that. I want my bigger bush. The bigger bush. With stuff like this, it helps to hold the, the last thing you want to be holding is something you can put down and then paint independently. Yes, exactly. The hairdryer would ruin the ASMR artistry. ASMR artistry. There we go. I am so not an ASMR artist, but hey. So I'm just going to start putting this on the inside. Now again, I don't want this to be a super dark, dark color, which is why I'm going with the burnt umber, because I know these stones, I'm going to make them more of a lighter color stone, because I'm not going for a straight up gray. A lot of the requests that's going into this build is to make things colorful and not your typical variations of dark tones and gray tones. So this one I figured I'm actually going to do probably my rainbow sandstone for this I thought could be a lot of fun which is why I'm starting with my burn number base. Equal parts, half and half. And you do wanna make sure you poke this into the nooks and crannies. Oh, that's the other thing I did do, which didn't get caught on stream. I gave this a collar, just for a little bit of added reinforcement. So I'm gonna paint the inside first, for reasons. Then I'll paint the outside. It's pretty straightforward stuff. And then once I get this painted, we'll put that to the side and I'll show you how I make the base. And I'll show you the base again from the message board because uh, they're going to have similar looks to each other. Because, you know, same city. <laughs> that was the other thing I was debating about with the roof. Um, I realized you can fit a mini inside of this. But if you put the roof on, you can't fit a mini in there. So by leaving this open top, it has some playability features to it. Uh, specific paint for the foam. I'm using craft paints, just standard craft paints, uh, Wandering Silence. I would not recommend spraying this with any type of spray paint unless you have protected the foam first because many of these spray paints can melt your foam. 
there's a whole thing where yes you need to stand a certain distance away so on and so forth but I can guarantee you most people forget or don't regard that and then bye bye project which is kind of sad to see when the foam gets all melty and blushy on you so I go for craft paints simple acrylic craft paints your apple barrels your craft smarts your deco arts and things like that oh you found her oh that's sweet travis you found your wife a hippopotamus for christmas i only want hippopotamuses oh i can see it now on christmas morning god help me not christmas time yet nope 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 stop me help me help me i think help me is the better term And you don't want to make this too much of a gloppy layer. It's just, this is basically adding a, acting as sort of a seal coat for you at the same time. So you just want to make sure you have coverage. And what you can always do after the fact is paint the bottom. I do tend to do that. I will put the paint on the bottom too. Ooh, I need to get... Hold on. This is where I need my little fake base. I suppose you could wait on putting this on, but it's there. Yes, you just heard Christmas music before we even hit Halloween. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, not sorry, darlings. Hey, you can toss words at me and I'll get songs going. That's the scary thing. That's actually how Cantriel came about, because I was goofing around with some buddies and they just started giving me words and I started singing songs like, okay, well, the next uh, next PC you make has to be a bard. I'm like, okay, fine. Next PC I had to make was Cantriel. So I was like, okay, well, it's a bard. I know that. But I do have a lot of fun with her. She's one of my favorite PCs that I've ever played. Okay, this gets our veil coated up. See? Well, 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 what have we here? Now we're back to Halloween, folks. There's the Oogie Boogie Man. Whoa. Setting that off to the side to dry. Now let me show you Dust Base. Do, 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 do. Again, sorry, not sorry. Uh, did I throw away the other baby wipe? I think I did. I washed my hands. I got a little bit of stuff on them. <laughs> this is Halloween. This is Halloween. Halloween. Halloween? My little guy used to say, Halloween? 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 I used to love his little voice. Now he doesn't have that little voice anymore. He says, Halloween. Like you're supposed to. But gone are the days. Oh, that's right. I wanted to paint the bucket, too. Not kick the bucket, mind you, but paint the bucket. All right, I'm just going to take a smaller paintbrush. Same stuff. You will find you're probably going to have to do a couple layers, though, because this particular plastic. But it's just that burnt umber Mod Podge mix. And just get the paint on. I will say don't get too thick. You might regret it. You can also paint the inside up and get that handle. The bucket can't, oh, I'm not even in screen. Good job. So basically just get this painted up too. Quite straightforward. All right, and we're gonna just place that gently off to the side, also to dry. There we go. Into the water. <sighs> oh, what about Matron? I missed something with Matron. Dungeon Matron. Can't stay your character. Oh, no! <gasps> Good luck. Inspiration your way. Hopefully it works. Oh, dear lord. The Oogie Boogie Man. That's what I'm talking about. Mr. Bones. Oh, Costco? I don't know. Costco? No, that makes me sad that they already have stuff up and going. Nope. No, thank you. All right, so now the base. Which... 
shoot, let me get the other thing out. Let me get that back out again so you can see what I'm going to be doing for the base. So with the message board, I just put everything on top of the box. I'd had the message board in. So this is how the base is getting it made up. So it's just sort of a varied size brick layout. So I'll show you how to do that. You're going to need a ballpoint pen, preferably black. And what I did is I took foam core and I put it on top of corrugated cardboard, reinforce it, always important. We will be hiding the sins of this in just a minute. But again, it's the Dollar Tree foam core because it does that beautifully. It just pulls it off like that. Now, what you can do is you could always place, except mine's wet, you could always place what you're putting on top just so you can see what area you absolutely need to cover, or you can just do the whole thing. So basically what I do is I freehand this, and I'll start off with one corner and just play around with the bricks and essentially just create a mix of sizes and that's how I get my varied bricks going in here. Like these are going to be two small bricks together, huzzah, make this sort of a smaller square and just sort of work around that way. Make this another larger rectangle. There are some who have sort of um, formulas set up for it as to how you can get this going and make it look a certain way. Uh, there are some who say, oh, well, don't ever do it like what I just did where it's sort of a firm line, but I eyeball it. I go with what my heart, what my heart is telling me to. <laughs> Let me tip this down just a little bit because I know I'm going to be leaning over more. And that way, there it is better. That way I'm not hiding out on you completely. So it's just, yeah, going around playing with the sizes and everything like that and so on and so forth and you kind of end up with this varied collection of bricks make that one sort of like a longer so you get the idea there's really for me it's more chaos it's chaotic why not To get that built up and around itself. Mm. Do a couple small ones here. And you do want to make sure that your ballpoint pen is biting in so you get those nice deep layers in there. And I'm going to get those to line up a little bit because I want to put a larger stone right there. And I do find. Um, this is the hotel one. Shoot. I forgot. I think it's Bic. Um, the ones that have sort of the more tapered top to them as opposed to classic Bic. These I find actually dig in a little bit better. I don't know if you can see the difference there. Just my observation, which is why I got this one. I should see Target. I have not been to Target in four months. Wow, that's impressive. Last time I was there was before I had to like run to uh, get something for the castle. Go me! I've broken the power of the target. No, I have not, because I'll probably be there soon enough and leave in a daze, wonder how I ended up with everything that I've gotten. <laughs> do a nice bigger brick right here. But this is how I do these. Just sort of randomly going with my mind's eye as to how I want to plot this all out. So that's the whole concept and again you end up with this sort of a look once it's done. You can see the variation and everything like that. So then what you want to do is for the edging to hide the sins of the edge, basically just to hide the cardboard. I'm going back to my half inch strip of foam core. Make sure you peel off both sides. I like this music. This music has not distracted me the whole time. Maybe except for dancing, but that's not a bad sign. Ding! So for this, I'm just going to go through and cut off little sections of brick. And yes, I'm freehanding this. If we want to get technical, it's probably like, what? Yeah, about a tenth, a little bit over a tenth of an inch. There and about. 
just cut a whole bunch of these off. That's a little bit too big, hold on. One moment, please. There we go. You're gonna be too small. No, nope. off screen, sorry. Push that forward, it's because I moved my mat. I moved my mat, my mat was my marker. Okay, so I have these trimmed up. They're about a tenth of an inch in uh, width. And now I'm going to go back to my hot glue gun. And you want to find about your center. This was a three inch by three inch square. So I know I need to work with about here. This is why those cutting mats are so handy. So I'm just going to put that little bit there. And I will place the first stone on. And you want it to basically hide the cardboard. See? And you get that, and then you get this nice little lip up type of thing. It just it creates a nice edge, which I appreciate. So I'm going to keep going around. Especially with the corrugation, you want to make sure you get that filled in. And I'll just jump over these guys and put across the edge. Obviously, if you want this to fit up more towards like a full thing, you're going to want to go in and actually cut your pieces that way. Does that make sense? So cut it to be like there. But this gives you sort of your cobbled brick effect. And this is also going to get rounded down as I'm working on it, so it's not going to be as drastic of a dip as it looks right now. And you may find that, yes, you have a little bit of the sticking out of the edge, so you can always take a little bit and attach. We're going to get really tricky. <laughs> Just leave that floating for now. If you get hot glue like that, you can always just take your nozzle and schmood it. But you see it starts hiding your ugly edges. So that's pretty much how this base gets made. And then what I did is, again, coat it in the same mix of the burnt umber with Mod Podge. Let it dry overnight. And you end up with your completed base ready for your piece to be put on top of it. It will help to get this painted separately and then glue your well on top. I will say that. But that, you can see it like this nice brick effect and you will want to, I'm not gonna do it now because the glue is still plugging away. But that will get you a nice little varied brick size base to work with. So that's how I did the base for the uh, message board. It's also I'm going to do the base for the well. The well, well, well. What have we here? I'm going to do a nice long thin one right through here. But just have fun with it and play around. Um, again, there are others who have more exacting formulas, which if that's what you want to do, by all means, you can do that. You can play around, see what works best for you. Now I do know the well's gonna go mostly in here, so I'm kind of just working more perimeter mode at this point. So let me jump this guy up. <laughs> Let's see, you can take it so it rounds off like so, your ballpoint. See, it's always a good thing to carry that through. Now that the glue is cool. But that is that with that one. This is definitely a much better way to spend a Saturday night, just sort of like vegging out in front of some, uh, <laughs> watching The Good Place for the third time on Netflix. I haven't done that, not at all. Mm -mm. I hope Matron made it out okay. Very curious to hear what happened with her character. That's tough when you're uh, faced with uh, 
Ooh. You know, those saving throws. <laughs> Will they, won't they? Shall this be the end? Yeah, let's do a couple little ones right there. That'll be cute. So yeah, this is just, um, sometimes this can be very therapeutic. <laughs> Because you're just sitting there making, making, make, 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 make. And there you go. And then it's done. And it's happiness is. All right. So I literally can keep going with this all night, but then you're watching me draw bricks and that can get very boring. So basically what's going to happen is everything needs to dry at this point for the well. It's been painted. It's been coated. Um, I will probably end up painting this off stream. This is not something where... You necessarily need to see how it gets all painted together. If you want to see the approach I'm going to use for it, do check out my Dice Tower tutorial and watch the Rainbow Sandstone section of that tutorial. That's what I'll probably be doing to get the variations and colors of the stones. And then I will take care of painting the lovely dangling bucket as well and get that all attention. But I will share, uh, get it all painted up and ready to go. And then I will share it with you all. So you can see how the well with its bucket came out to be. Uh, but that's the basic gist of getting a well pulled together using basic materials, using basic tools and all those wonderful things. Again, this is those, this is one of those things where I am saving recordings of these. Will I have time to get around to creating tutorials? I don't know. My God, if there was an editor in my future who could do this for me, that would be fun fabulous, but they, they don't come cheap. But at the very least, you can go back and kind of check things through and see how it goes. Thank you so much for joining me this lovely Saturday evening. This was a great way to uh, pass some time. Uh, oh God, Matron, I'm I'm hoping for your sake that you are up and thriving and doing just fine. We shall see. <laughs> Hi, everyone's talking about it. So thank you for those who joined me in the chat. Uh, have a lovely rest of the weekend. Enjoy your Sunday. I will see you, uh, oh, a couple times this coming week. So I am going to have a special live stream announcing the Guild Build Challenge item for October because that's on me this month haha -ha. and you also see me for the lunch break live stream as well as for the usual terrain feature friday live stream and then don't forget you can find me sunday over on cobalt press's twitch channel where i will be dming the last air which is margrieve in uh margrieve inspired campaign that i'm writing up for my lovely talented wonderful players please join us there at 8 p.m can't wait to see you there if you're interested and then thursday nights find me over on mini terrain domain also on twitch where we play the dawn bringers that's it for me for tonight. I'm going to go and um, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm just going to kind of enjoy the quiet and time to myself. So take care and um, I will see you on the flip side, everyone. So bye. <laughs>